Headlines are blazing today with the escalating conflict between Israel and Hamas. The Al-Qassam Brigade's Hamas military wing has claimed that 13 hostages were killed in Israel's retaliatory airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. Simultaneously, the Israeli military warns of a population evacuation in northern Gaza, while Hamas urges residents to stay put, creating a climate of confusion and fear. The Biden administration confirms 14 U.S. nationals among those in Hamas custody, and back home in the U.S., heightened security measures are in place against potential extremist threats. In a heartbreaking turn, Israeli businessman Eyal Waldman, once a proponent of employing Palestinians, loses his daughter in a Hamas-led attack. The massacre's site, a music festival, is a grim reminder of the over 260 lives lost. Meanwhile, the State Department grapples with over 20,000 requests for assistance from U.S. citizens in Israel, arranging evacuation flights and ships. On the international stage, the World Health Organization warns that Gaza's health system is on the brink, due to airstrikes and severe medical supply shortages. France bans pro-Palestinian demonstrations for fear of disturbing peace, and Palestinians in East Jerusalem live in a state of lockdown due to violence fears. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has condemned Hamas attacks, likening them to ISIS's actions. Iran's foreign minister hints at the opening of a new front against Israel, depending on the latter's actions in Gaza, while the U.S. voices concern over Hezbollah's potential intervention. In East Jerusalem, a Palestinian gunman wounds two police officers before being killed by Israeli forces, adding fuel to the raging fire. United Nations reports indicate that the number of displaced people in Gaza has risen to 338,000, with over 2,500 homes destroyed or severely damaged. Amidst this, the U.S. has negotiated with Qatar not to release billion in Iranian oil revenue recently unfrozen. Finally, Israeli lawmakers have sworn in an emergency government in response to the ongoing conflict. A day filled with fear, uncertainty, and a desperate cry for peace. That's the news for now. Stay tuned for more updates and analysis. Welcome back everyone! This is your host Emily Norma, bringing you the latest updates from the world around us. And I'm David, here to offer insight and commentary on these pressing headlines. You're tuned into Hot Topic, and we're live every day with the news that's shaping our world. Remember to subscribe and turn on those notifications, so you won't miss a thing. Now, let's get straight to the Hot Topics. The tension in the Israel-Hamas war continues to escalate. According to Hamas, Israel's retaliatory airstrikes on the Gaza Strip have resulted in the death of 13 hostages captured in southern Israel. The nationalities of these hostages have not been disclosed, but the Biden administration has confirmed that there are between 100 to 150 people in Hamas custody, including 14 U.S. nationals. The Israeli military has issued a stark warning to the United Nations, stating that the entire population in the northern Gaza Strip must evacuate south within 24 hours. However, the UN has voiced serious concerns about the potentially devastating humanitarian consequences of such a large-scale movement, considering it houses about 1.1 million people. Interestingly, despite earlier threats from Hamas to execute a hostage every time Israel carried out an airstrike without prior warning, no executions have been announced since the threat was issued. The situation remains tense and rapidly changing. The UN has called for any such evacuation orders to be rescinded to avoid exacerbating the already tragic situation. However, Israel's UN ambassador has criticized the UN's response, claiming it ignores the severity of the attack on Israel. What's your take on this breaking news? There are unsettling developments for the residents of Gaza City. The IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, have ordered citizens to relocate further south within the Gaza Strip for their own safety. However, Hamas has advised Palestinians to stay in their homes. As a result, there's a state of chaos and confusion among the residents. According to the Associated Press, Inus Hamden, an officer at the UN, Palestinian Refugee Agency stated, no one understands what to do. The UN reports that since the Hamas invasion of southern Israel on October 7, a staggering 338,000 Gaza residents have been displaced. Meanwhile, on the Israeli border of the Gaza Strip, about 300,000 soldiers have assembled. 
The IDF's international spokesperson, Lt. Col. Jonathan Conrakis, did not explicitly state preparations for a ground assault on Gaza. However, he mentioned the troops, along with tanks, armored vehicles, and other artillery, are making preparations for the next stage of the war. Shifting focus to U.S., there are heightened security measures in cities across the nation in response to the Israel-Hamas conflict. While no specific threat has been reported, internal law enforcement bulletins warn of a potential mobilization of homegrown and domestic violent extremists. Private intelligence analysis group, INSICT, predicts potential physical attacks and virtual harassment campaigns against Jewish and Muslim communities. This prediction is based on the historical pattern that escalations in the Israel-Palestinian conflict often trigger violence against Western Jewish communities. Targets typically include houses of worship, community centers, government facilities, and public demonstrations. Lastly, in a tragic turn of events, Israeli businessman Eyal Waldman, a known advocate for Palestinian employment, warns the loss of his young daughter in a recent music festival attack. Your insights on this development? There's a heartbreaking update on that story about Eyal Waldman, the Israeli businessman who lost his daughter in the music festival attack. He shared his grief with CBS News stating, Today, we buried my daughter, my youngest daughter, Danielle. Danielle Waldman and her boyfriend were among 260 festival goers killed in the surprise attack by Hamas militants. The high-tech executive was renowned for employing Palestinians in the West Bank for his leading computer chip company. Now, he's calling for a resolution, stating, we need to show force, and we need to be strong. This is a drastic shift from his initial peace-seeking stand. The story is a tragic reminder of the human cost of conflict, especially for those who advocate for peace. Indeed, it's an incredibly heartbreaking situation. And it's a stark reminder that behind these numbers and statistics are real people with families, hopes, and dreams. And speaking of the aftermath of the music festival massacre, some of the attendees have returned to the site to collect their belongings, describing the scene as hell. Israeli defense forces remain at the festival site to guard the area. There are still remnants of the crowd's belongings at the site, a chilling reminder of the horrific attack. On a different note, we'll be moving on to cover another trending piece of news. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss this. Turning to some distressing news from the State Department, at least 20,000 U.S. citizens have reached out for assistance since the Hamas attacks. The State Department has announced plans to arrange evacuation flights and ships to help Americans in Israel leave the region, starting this Friday. Once evacuated from Israel, individuals will then be able to arrange travel to their chosen destinations. As the situation evolves, the State Department plans to augment these initial transportation options. They are also in touch with you, as citizens currently in Gaza and working with Egyptian counterparts to explore options for evacuation. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has issued a troubling statement. They warn that the Gaza health system is at a breaking point due to the escalating airstrike campaign carried out by Israel in retaliation for Hamas's surprise assault. They cite acute shortages of medical supplies and the toll of ongoing airstrikes as factors exacerbating an already critical situation. The WHO has documented 34 attacks on healthcare in Gaza since last Saturday. These attacks have resulted in the death of 11 health workers on duty, 16 injuries, and damages to 19 health facilities and 20 ambulances. Furthermore, Israel has imposed a total siege, preventing fuel and supplies from entering Gaza during the current counteroffensive. Israel's energy minister stated on social media that the siege would not pause unless Hamas released the hostages captured during the terror attack. As we continue to monitor this escalating situation, it's important to remember the very real human cost of these conflicts. Your thoughts? In a stern message, Israel's energy minister, Katz, said that no humanitarian aid would reach Gaza, no electricity would be restored, and no water supply would be reopened until the Israeli hostages are returned home. This stance further intensifies the already critical situation in Gaza. In a shift of focus to Europe, France has taken a stringent stand against pro-Palestinian demonstrations. The French Minister of the Interior, Gerald Darmanin, has instructed police chiefs across the country to ban these demonstrations, citing a likelihood of disturbing the peace. Darmanin has ordered the arrest of anyone organizing a demonstration or engaging in disorderly conduct. 
He has also emphasized the systematic and visible protection of places frequented by French Jews. So, what actions are being taken to protect these places frequented by French Jews? Excellent question. The French government has deployed 10,000 law enforcement agents to 580 sensitive sites. Non-French nationals found to be disturbing the peace may even face revocation of their residency papers and expulsion from the country. Now, turning to East Jerusalem, the streets are unusually quiet due to fear of violence following the Hamas attack. Many Palestinians are choosing to stay home, creating an eerie calm in usually bustling areas. It's a harrowing situation indeed. What's the general sentiment among Palestinians in East Jerusalem? Munir Nizeba, a Palestinian human rights lawyer, describes the situation as living under a COVID-19 lockdown. The fear of revenge attacks has altered daily life significantly. The tension is palpable in the region, and we can only hope for a peaceful resolution soon. The fear is palpable among the people in Jerusalem. A Palestinian tour guide out with his daughter expresses the shared sentiment of wanting things to go back to the way they were before Hamas's attack. A longing for peace and normalcy is echoing throughout the city amidst the terrifying situation. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has made a powerful statement against Hamas attacks on Israel. Describing the attacks as depravity in the worst imaginable way, he compared the acts of Hamas to those of ISIS. This is a strong stance from the United States, signaling their continued support for Israel. Blinken is scheduled to meet King Abdullah and Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas, as well as senior officials from U.S. allies Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Egypt. The United States and its allies are working to prevent the conflict from spreading and are pressing countries to use their leverage with Hamas to release the hostages immediately and unconditionally. As for the future, Blinken speaks of a vision for a region that is more peaceful, more prosperous, more secure, more integrated. But with recent actions of Hamas, the choice between peace and conflict has been made more stark. It's clear that the path to peace is fraught with challenges. The Iranian foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdullahian, has stated that the decision to open a new front in the war against Israel will depend on Israel's actions in Gaza. This statement intensifies concerns about a potential second front on Israel's northern border with Lebanon. However, Iranian officials have been clear in stating that they had no involvement in the Hamas attack on Israel. So, I've heard a rumor that Iran is directly supplying weapons to Hamas. Is this true? Hold on. That's a dangerous rumor to spread without solid evidence. While Iran has been a long-term backer of Hamas, they have been adamant that the country had no involvement in the recent attack on Israel. It's crucial, especially in situations like this, to rely on trustworthy news sources instead of spreading unchecked information. I apologize for that. It was a piece of unverified information I came across. I'll ensure to be more meticulous in the future. That's a good learning moment for all of us. Now, moving on. Two officers were wounded in a shooting incident in Israeli annexed East Jerusalem. The gunman, a 20-year-old man from the city's eastern sector, was killed by Israeli forces. In these turbulent times, we continue to witness such incidents of violence and can only hope for a swift resolution to the conflict. The situation in Gaza continues to deteriorate. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs reports a 30% increase in the number of displaced people in Gaza since yesterday, bringing the total to 338,000. It's staggering to imagine that many displaced people in one of the most densely populated areas in the world. I've got a cousin who works in humanitarian aid, he'd be shaken to hear about this. It's definitely a sobering situation there. Indeed. The UN Relief and Works Agency has noted that nearly 218,000 displaced people are sheltering in 92 of its schools and facilities in the Gaza Strip. This conflict has led to over 2,500 homes being destroyed or severely damaged and rendered uninhabitable by retaliatory airstrikes from Israel. Essential services like water, food, medicine, and fuel have been affected as Israel halted their entry. Gaza's sole power plant has run out of fuel, leading to a blackout and a looming water crisis as water pumps and desalination plants cannot operate without electricity. 
Despite this, humanitarian workers have managed to offer some assistance, including delivering fresh bread to 137,000 displaced people and 70,000 liters of fuel to water and sanitation facilities. As we talk about these numbers, it's crucial to remember that these are not just statistics. Each number represents a human being, with hopes, dreams, and fears, all caught in this devastating conflict. The U.S. has reportedly reached a quiet understanding with Qatar not to release any of the billion in Iranian oil revenue that was unfrozen as part of the U.S.-Iran prisoner swap last month. This high-stakes deal involved the release of five Americans who had been wrongfully detained in Iran and included the transfer of the Iranian oil assets from a restricted account in South Korea to Qatar. That's a significant development. Absolutely. And it remains uncertain whether this development occurred after the recent Hamas attack on Israel. In a recent briefing, White House National Security spokesman John Kirby insisted that the regime was never going to see a dime of that money. Meanwhile, in Israel, lawmakers have sworn in an emergency government following a 66-4 vote. This comes a day after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced a wartime partnership with rival Benny Gantz. However, opposition chief Yair Lapid has announced he will not join the government, criticizing its failure to prevent the brutal attack over the weekend. A lot of major developments happening all at once. Indeed. As we've seen, the global landscape is constantly shifting, and we're here to help our listeners navigate these complex currents. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Hot Topic. We've taken a deep dive into some critical current events, and we're grateful to have had you along for the ride. Remember to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications, so you don't ever miss an update. Your support is truly appreciated. If today's conversation resonated with you, feel free to share it in your circles, whether that's in a group chat or over a cup of coffee. And if you have any thoughts or questions, do leave a comment. Couldn't have said it better myself. And hey, don't forget to pencil us in, same time, same place, every day. We've got plenty more enlightening discussions on the horizon. We look forward to continuing this news journey with you. Until next time. Stay in the loop, keep your eyes on the news, our channel's content will amuse.